Hello everyone, welcome to yoga. My name is David. Let's uh, begin today in any comfortable seated position. And once you find your comfortable seat, start to close your eyes. And bring your attention to your body. And start to notice what sensations are present, beginning with the most obvious sensations in your body. For most of us, that'll probably be those places where your body's making contact with the floor or any prop that you might be sitting on. And then start to notice the subtler sensations in your body. Temperature of the air on your skin. Maybe noticing the energetic quality in your body. Do you feel wiry and alert? Maybe anxious? Maybe feel a little sluggish? Noticing the energetic quality in your body. And start to observe your breathing, watching your breath as it enters and exits at the tip of your nose. Now let's begin to shake the breath. Begin to make your inhalations a little bit deeper. Slow down your exhalations. If you have Ujjayi Pranayama in your practice, you can form that slight constriction at the back of your throat so that you can hear the air passing in and out through your throat as you breathe. Now bring your palms together in prayer position, Anjali Mudra at the level of your heart. Take a moment to consider your sankalpa or your intention for your practice today. Just take a moment to think about what it is you need from today's practice to bring you into a state of harmony, a state of balance. And then take a moment to consider your longer term intention and where you're hoping the practice will take you in the long run. And trusting that this practice will serve your highest intention, let's seal that intention and set the context for the rest of practice by chanting the Gayatri Mantra three times. And feel free to join me if you're familiar with it. Inhale. Om Bhur Bhuvatsvaha Tat Savitur Varenyam Pargo Devasya Dimahi Yuyo Yuna Prachodayat Om Bhur Bhuvatsvaha Tat Savitur Varenyam 
Bargo de Vasya de Mahi, Dio Yuna Prachodayat, Om Bur Bhuvatsvaha, Tatsavitur Varenyam, Bargo de Vasya de Mahi, Dio Yuna Prachodayat, Slowly opening your eyes. Let's release your hands down to your lap. We'll come forward off of your seat. Move any props that you may have been sitting on off to the side. Bring your palms down on the mat about shoulder width apart. Make sure your index fingers are pointed toward the front of the mat or maybe dialed open just slightly and spread your fingers nice and wide so that you can feel the ball mounts of your fingers grounding down onto the mat. Then from here, Curl your toes under and press yourself back to downward facing dog. And as you come into your downward facing dog, feel free to shift around, pedal out your feet, shift your hips. If it feels like a lot to come into this shape right away, you can come down onto your knees. And of course, at any point during the practice, if there's anything you need to modify or skip, you should feel free to do so. You can always lower down into child's pose, take a few rounds of cat cow on your hands and knees. If you find that you lose the integrity of the breath or something just doesn't feel right, you may need to skip it. And coming back to neutral, press down through your fingers, through your ball mounts, through the heel of your hands. Keep the fingers nice and wide. Lift your tailbone. Let your heels be heavy. Let your head drop so that you're looking somewhere down between your legs. Or the back of your legs lengthening out. Continue breathing. And then on your next inhalation, rock forward so that your shoulders come over your wrists and drop your knees down so that they're hovering just over the mat. We'll take a couple breaths here. Tuck your tailbone under, feel your low belly engage. Your low back might round a little bit. Continue breathing. And then on your next exhalation, Let's rock back into downward facing dog. So let's move back and forth between these two shapes. Each time you inhale, come forward, shoulders over the wrist, knees hovering over the mat. Tuck your tailbone. And each time you exhale, press back to downward facing dog. Keep moving like this at your own pace with your own breath, making the breath last a little bit longer than the movement. Next time you inhale, let's shift forward into plank pose. So come over your wrist, shoulders over your wrist, but straighten out your legs this time. Make your body nice and long. Feel that low belly engagement. Really charge up your legs. Keep pressing down evenly through both hands. And then shifting your weight onto your right hand. Let's roll to your right to find side plank. Take a couple breaths here. Remember, you can drop your right knee down to the mat if you need a little more support. And then coming back through neutral, we'll shift to the other side. So roll onto your left hand, roll into the sides of your feet, extend your right arm up toward the ceiling. A couple breaths here. All right. And returning to plank pose, press yourself back to downward facing dog. So we're going to put all those movements together. On your next inhalation, shift your shoulders over your wrists, drop your knees, and then exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale forward into plank pose, shift your weight onto your right hand, roll onto the sides of your feet, inhale, left hand comes up. Exhale, return to plank pose. 
and then inhale, shift to side leg on the other side. Exhale, return to plank, press yourself back to down facing dog. Inhale forward, drop the knees, shoulders to floor. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale forward into plank. Exhale, side plank on the right. Inhale, back to plank. Exhale, side plank on the left. Inhale, return to plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. Let's do that one more time. Inhale, shoulders come forward, knees drop down toward the mat. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, forward into plank. Exhale, side plank on the right. Inhale, plank pose. Exhale, side plank on the left. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, downward facing dog. And at the bottom of your next exhalation, walk your feet up towards your hands and lower down into a crouch. So it doesn't have to be a squat. You can lower forward onto the balls of your feet and let your heels come up off the mat. Bring your hands down onto the floor and then just start to shift your weight back and forth on your hands. Continue with your breathing practice. And as you do, you might want to bend your elbows, press a little bit into the inside of your legs, just using this gentle motion to help open up through your inner leg line. Continue breathing. Coming back, you can either stay in the crouch or if you want to return to Malasana now and sit back into your squat, take a couple of breaths here into your squat. And if you feel comfortable in this shape, you can maybe practice rocking back and forth. If it feels a little early in practice for you to come into Malasana, you can always bring your hands up behind you and take the squat shape here with the support of your hands behind. Shifting your weight forward, come forward onto the ball mounts with your feet, press your elbows into the inside of your knees again, and then let's take a few side dips with the shoulder. So let your right shoulder drop down, and then let your left shoulder dip down. And each time you do, of course, you bend more at the elbow, and you feel yourself pressing more into the inside of your leg, just opening up through the inner leg. Once you've done both sides an equal number of times, return to your squat again with or without the assistance of your hands. And this time, we'll practice just opening up your knees. So open your right knee out to the side and then bring it back a few times. And switch to the left. Ground. Let's straighten through the back of the legs a little bit, release forward into Uttanasana. Keep a slight bend in the knees so that you can feel your ribs compressing down into your thighs. Release the crown of your head. And on your inhalation, come halfway up, find your flat back, lengthen out the spine, extend the crown of your head. Continue breathing. Inhale, come all the way up, reach for the ceiling. 
exhale, mountain pose. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold, hinge at the hips, bend your knees. Inhale, half lift, find your flat back. Exhale, step back with your left foot, bring the top of your left foot and your knee down to your mat. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, bring both hands down to the mat. And then on your inhalation, shift your hips back any amount. Exhale, come forward again. Step your back foot up to meet the front. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up, reach for the ceiling. Exhale, mountain pose. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold, hinge at the hips, bend your knees. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, step your right foot back, bring your right knee on the top of your right foot down. Inhale, rise up, float launch. Exhale, both hands down to the mat. Inhale, shift your hips back. Exhale, step your back foot up to meet the front. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up, reach for the ceiling. Exhale, mountain pose. Let's do that again. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, left foot comes back. Inhale, rise up. Maybe this time the high lunge. Exhale, both hands down to the mat. Drop the back knee. Inhale, shift the hips back. Exhale, step your back foot up to meet the front. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up. Reach for the ceiling. Exhale, mountain pose. Exhale, fold, flat back. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, right foot steps back. Maybe high lunge on the other side. Exhale, both hands and your back knee down to the mat. Inhale, shift the hips back. Exhale, fold. Step your back foot up to meet the front. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up, reach from the seal. Let's grab for the left wrist and take a side bend over to the right. And step your left foot behind your right, making this big crescent shape with your body. Continue breathing. Now keep your feet where they're at. If they're not here, bring them where they're at, where my feet are at, dropping the left foot down the right. Extend both arms out in front of you. And on your exhalation, bend through both knees and lower your left knee down toward the mat. Inhale, come on back up. Let's do that a few more times. Exhale, lower down any amount. Inhale, back up. Keep moving this way. This time you inhale. Let's come on back up. Square your feet to face the front of the mat. Reach from the ceiling. Grab for the right wrist. Side bend to the left. Maybe stepping the right foot behind the left this time. Breathing here. To neutral with the torso, bring both hands out in front of you. Right foot is behind the left. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, back up. Keep moving this way. Ceiling. 
exhale, mountain pose. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold, hinge at the hips, bend your knees. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, step or hop back into plank and lower down with control. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. On your next exhalation, pivot your left heel so that it comes down to the mat and step your right foot through to the left side of your mat. Then you bring your left hand to your hip, let it hover in the air, and then pick your right foot up off the ground. Right, return back to your downward facing dog. Keep a little bend in your knees and pivot your right heel down to the mat. Step your left foot through to the right side of your mat. Hand stays lifted, left foot stays lifted. Breathe in here. Let's move back and forth between those two shapes. So return to your downward facing dog. And on your next inhalation, pivot your left heel down, step your right foot through. Exhale, return to downward facing dog. Then switching to the other side. And just keep moving this way with your own breath. If you feel comfortable making the movement, practice dropping your hip down toward the floor as you move to one side. Once you've done both sides an equal number of times, return back to your neutral downward facing dog. Inhale your shoulders over your wrists, and then on your exhalation, lower down with control, either in plank or knees, chest, chin. Bring the tops of your feet down to the mat. Leave your hands underneath your shoulders, and then press up your head and your chest, but keep your elbows bent a lot, and in fact, Imagine that you're trying to draw your elbows down toward the floor as you lift your head and your chest off the ground. Relax your bottom. Continue breathing. Keep your elbows tucked in. Don't let them splay out. To your belly. Let's scoot back a little bit just to make sure I stay in the frame. And extend your left arm straight out in front of you. Slide your right arm underneath so that your palm is facing up. And then on your next inhalation, shift your weight to the left and lift your right elbow up or shoulder up off the mat. And then on your exhalation, lower back down. So each time you inhale, your left armpit's going to lower down, your right shoulder's going to lift. And imagine that you're trying to create length between your shoulder and your elbow. And the next time you inhale, let's stay here. And you may need to adjust how high your right hand is. If you're not feeling a lot of stretch, you may need to move it more in line with your shoulder. A little bit too much, you may need to drop your right hand down towards your waist. And just continue breathing here, leveling out the shoulders. All right, release out of the stretch. We'll climb onto the other side. Extend your right arm, palm facing down straight out in front of you. 
left hand crosses under the right arm, palm facing up toward the ceiling. And then from here, on your next inhalation, roll to your right in your mouth. Feel your left shoulder lift up off the mat. And then exhale, lower down. And just keep moving this way. Inhaling up. Exhaling down. Next time you inhale and come up, let your shoulders level out. Continue breathing. Feel that lengthening from your left elbow up through the back of your left shoulder. And then lower down on your next exhalation. Bring both your palms down flat on the mat, with the heels of your hands down by your low ribs. Curl your back toes, your toes under, lift your knees up off the mat, and on your next exhalation, press yourself up into plank and shift your hips back to down. And bending your knees just slightly. Spin your left heel down onto the mat again. Step your right foot through, but this time keep your right knee bent and bring the sole of your foot down to the mat. Reach back with your left hand to find this reverse table position. Press your hips up high, continue breathing. All right, and picking up your right foot again, we're gonna return to downward facing dog. So left hand comes back down onto the mat, Find that bent knee down or facing dog. And then bring your right heel down to the mat. Step your left foot under. Bring the sole of your left foot down. Reach back with your right hand. Palms come down onto the mat. Press your hips up off of the mat. So you can see that I'm at about a 45 degree angle to the normal long orientation of my mat. It's okay. Continue breathing. Back to center. Let's move back and forth between these two shapes. And I'll measure out the breath count as I demo this first one. So on your next exhalation, left heel comes down, right foot steps through. Inhale, lift the hips. Exhale, return it downward facing dog. Take an inhale here. Exhale, right heel comes down. Step your left foot through. Reach your right hand back. Inhale, lift the hips. Exhale, return it down. Facing dog. Let's keep moving like that a few times on your own with your own breath. Once you've completed an equal number on both sides, let's return back to your downward facing dog. And then at the bottom of the next exhalation, pause the breath and step or hop your feet to the front of the mat. Inhale half. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up. Reach up for the ceiling. Exhale, step open into a wide-legged stance. Turn your toes out at a 45-degree angle. And then on your next exhalation, bend to your right knee. Shift your hips over to the right. 
Inhale, come through side. Exhale, bend your left knee, shift your toe to the left. Keep moving this way. Take a few breaths here. Any modifications that you like to make in the shape, any variations that you like to play around with are totally fine. You can adjust your foot. You want to pick up your hand. You want to pick a bind. All right, coming back from the center, let's shift to the other side. Center, walk your hands around the face, the front of the mat, pivot the feet to find your runner's lunge. And then on your next exhalation, press yourself back to downward facing dog. And so we're going to practice moving into this reverse table shape again with this step on the knee. But this time we're going to keep going in the same direction. So I'm going to go ahead and walk in a semicircle in one direction and then a semicircle back. So you can watch me as I cue it out and then when you feel comfortable you can give it a try on your own. Spin your left heel down to the mat. Step your right foot through. Bend your knees and bring the sole of your right foot down and reach back with your left hand to find this reverse table shape. And then from here you're going to transfer your weight onto your left hand and you're going to step your left foot under reaching over with your right hand to find downward facing dog. You can see now that I'm perpendicular to my mat from where I started. Right, spin in the left heel down again, step the right foot through, reach the left hand back. And then switching on to the left hand, step the right foot under, reach over with the right hand. You can see now that I'm facing in the opposite direction, 180 degrees turn around on the mat. Right, then from here, Spin the left heel down to the mat. Step your right foot through. Bring the sole of your foot down. Take a breath here. And now we're perpendicular to the mat on the other side. Left heel comes down again. Step the right foot through. Bring the left hand down behind you. Step your left foot under. Reach over with your right hand. And you can see now that I'm back where I started. So we walk 360 degrees all the way around the mat. And we're going to go back in the other direction. So spin your right heel down to the mat. Step your left foot through. Right hand comes back. Right foot steps under, your left hand reaches over. Right heel down. Just keep moving in this way. And then eventually you can find yourself back where you start. Inhalation, shift your shoulders forward over your wrist, and on your exhalation, roll all the way down to your belly with control. 
tops of the feet come down, hands come down by the hips. Inhale, lift the head, lift the chest. Feels okay on the low back. Pick up your feet and the knees as well. You can hover your hands, let your palms face toward one another. You can reach back behind your low back, press your knuckles toward your ears. Continue breathing. Isolation. Lower your feet and bring your palms down onto the mat, elbows underneath your shoulders. Lift up through the crown of your head. Drag your elbows back down towards your heels. Move your sternum toward the front of the room. Notice if there's any gripping in your butt. And see if you can let that go. Heel of your hands as close to your low ribs, curl your toes under, press yourself back up into plank and shift your hips back to the downward facing dog. On your next inhalation, lift your right leg high, exhale, step it through inside of your right hand, drop your left knee, top of your left foot down onto the mat, shift your hips back for Ardha Anandasana. And take a few breaths here in the shape. Point the toes of your right foot back towards your knees. Spread your toes. Remember your hips are roughly over the top of your left knee. And you're dragging your right hip back in space as you press energy out through the sole of your right foot and through the crown of your head. Lengthen out your spine. Feel that lengthening in the back of your leg. Sole of your right foot down to the mat. Bring your left hand down underneath your left shoulder. Curl your left toes under. Lift your left knee off the mat. And we'll take a twist to the right. So the right arm extends up toward the ceiling. Continue breathing. And on your next exhalation, bring your right forearm down toward the mat inside of your right foot. Feel your right hip drop down toward the mat, keeping your right hip dropped low. On your next inhalation, reach up for the ceiling. And then exhale, bring the forearm back down toward the mat. And just keep moving this way with your breath. Next time you exhale, bring your right hand down outside of your right foot. Drop your back knee and the top of your back foot down onto the mat and bring both hands to the inside of your right foot. You can stay high on your hands or you can lower down onto your forearms. Let's keep the foot grounded for the first couple of breaths and on your inhalation, shift your weight forward and then on your exhalation, press back. So just exploring the range of motion in the hip. and in the hip flexors on the left leg. And coming back to neutral. If you'd like to open up your right knee to the right side, rolling onto the outer edge of your right foot, you can go ahead. And of course, if you want to stay on your forearms, if you're there, you can stay on your forearms, you can come back in front of your hands. If you want to add a bind, a bonus squat stretch, you can bring your left forearm in at a 45 degree angle, bend through your left knee, reach back for the outside of your left foot and open your heart up toward the ceiling. So you're going to focus if you're taking the bind, and even if you're not, you're going to leave that back leg down and just reach down along your back leg as you open your heart up toward the 
the ceiling for a twist to your right. Try to unwind, bring both hands down to the mat. Bring your right hand outside of your right foot. Press back into downward facing dog. Inhale, lift the left leg high. Exhale, step it through. Drop your right knee down to the mat, top of the back foot as well. And then shift your hips back for the half Hanuman on the other side, half splits. So flex through your front foot, spread your toes. Draw your left hip back in space. Right knee and the right side of your hip are roughly in a line. The hip on top of the knee. Feel that energy pressing out through the sole of your foot and extending to the crown of your head. You can breathe. the sole of your left foot down to the mat, bring your right hand down underneath your right shoulder, curl your back toes under, lift your right knee up off the mat, extend your left arm up toward the ceiling, and on your exhalation, drop your left forearm down inside your left leg, feel your hip drop as well on the left side, and then on your next inhalation, keep your hip low, but reach for the ceiling again with your left hand, and then exhale, and keep moving this way. And the next time you exhale, bring your left hand down inside of your left leg. Drop your back and lower the top of your left foot as well. And if you want to lower down onto your forearms and that feels available to you, go ahead. And then once you're in a shape that feels useful for you, just take a few rocks back and forth, exploring the range of motion. Notice what's happening in the hip. On the left side, the outer hip, notice what's happening in the hip flexor on the right side. Settling into a neutral position, where you feel some useful sensation. Let's take a few breaths here, and then when you're ready, you can let your left knee drop open to the left, maybe rolling onto the pinky toe side edge of your left foot. Bring your right hand in at a 45 degree angle. Open your heart up towards your left knee. You can slide your left hand down the back of your right leg. You can bend through your right knee, reach back for the outside of your right foot and breathe in. Side of your left foot, right hand comes down underneath your shoulder, and then from here, let's just sit back in Vajrasana, Thunderbolt Pose. I'm going to prepare for headstand next. If you have headstand in your practice and you don't want to listen to my explanation of how to come into headstand, you go ahead and practice your headstand with any variations that you like. If you are newer to the practice, I recommend going slow. This is a great pose, but it can also be very challenging, potentially dangerous for your neck shoulders so we want to make sure we have everything in alignment and that we feel solid all the way along so I'm going to talk us through a progression that you can explore on your own and we have a wall here so if you would like to move to a wall you can go ahead and do so all right so the first thing we'll talk about is our hands when you set up your hands 
you know, weave your fingers together. And then I find it useful to make sure that your pinky fingers aren't stacked. You can bring them more side to side. That way when you bring your hands down onto the mat, you're not gonna end up crunching through your pinky fingers quite as much. So this is the shape we're gonna take with our hands. To find a place where you're gonna bring your head down onto the mat, bring your thumb in between your eyebrows, and then reach up with your middle finger and locate the spot where your middle finger touches the top of your head. So it's gonna be, for most of us, just a finger width or two in front of the crown of your head. That's the part of your head that you want making contact with the mat. And for most of us, when we're learning headstand, the mistake we make is we tend to put our forehead down on the mat. It's really closer to the top of your head. So as you set up, before I transfer to the wall, Bring your hands down, weaving your fingers together, but unlatching your pinkies. And then bring that spot down, just in front of the crown of your head, down into the mat. Your elbows should be about shoulder width apart. Be careful not to splay out. And remember that 90% of your weight, 95% of your weight, is in your forearms, and the remainder is on your head. So even though we call it headstand, most of the weight is in your forearms. This is very important. So as you're shaping up for uh, coming into this pose, you can practice curling your toes under and just lifting your hips up off the mat. And then you'll find right away that you'll be invited to press down through your forearms. You may want to stay here and breathe. Or you may want to walk your hands in a little bit towards your feet. And if this is enough for you, stay here. If you want to practice picking up one foot. And then the other. And you can give that a try as well. And if you feel stable in this shape and you want to practice the inversion, but you're still new to the practice, then come to the wall, set yourself up six to eight inches from the wall in just the way that I showed you. Of course, you can move your mat or if you're on the carpet, you may feel enough support that way. And again, leave yourself some room, at least six to eight inches. Walk your feet in close to your elbows. Keep your elbows from splaying out. And then maybe bend through one leg and just practice lifting up. See if you can bring maybe one foot to the wall. Keep pressing down through your forearms. Maybe bringing both feet to the wall. Breathing here. Maybe extending both legs. And then maybe practice balancing away from the wall. Create a little tension throughout your body. Belly, low back, the legs. And then when you're ready, lower down and then come back down with control. All right, so returning back to your mat, if you left it, let's take a few breaths here in Thunderbolt Pose, Vajrasana. Bring your hands down onto your lap, close your eyes. to the mat, shoulder width apart, curl your toes under, press yourself back, your downward facing dog. And then breathe in here. And then on your next inhalation, pick up your right leg. And on your exhalation, step your right foot outside of your right hand. So, you kind of like a wide runner's lunge here. So shift your weight onto your left hand and see if you can step your left foot through toward the front of the mat. And then step your left foot back, step your right foot back, and return to downward facing dog. Let's try that on the other side. Inhale, left leg comes up. Exhale, step your left foot outside your left hand. Inhale, step your right foot through, pick up your left hand. Exhale, return to downward facing dog. Let's do that a few more times. Inhale, lift the right leg. Exhale, step it outside. 
Inhale, lift the right arm, step the left foot through, extend. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, left hand, left leg raises. Exhale, step it outside the left foot. Inhale, right foot comes through. Exhale, downward facing dog. One more time, each side on your own. Once you've completed both sides, return to your downward facing dog and find your breath. And from your downward facing dog, let's come forward into seated. If any way you want to come forward into seated, swing your legs around, practice your jump through. And then from here, let's come down onto your back. Keeping your right leg bent, extend your left leg up toward the ceiling, and then on your exhalation, slowly lower your heel down toward the floor. And then inhale, lift the leg again, keep the toes pointed back down toward your knee, spread your feet, and then exhale, lower down. Keep moving this way. You'll feel the bottom of your left foot, left, you feel the left side of your bottom lift up off the mat a little bit when you raise your leg. But try not to let your hips lift off the ground. And then you can switch to the other side. Right foot comes up. Time extend the left leg again. I apologize if I got my right and left screwed up. We'll come back to the first leg. Extend your left foot up toward the ceiling. And this time, let your left foot drop open to your left. And draw your foot back in line and then point your toes back toward the ceiling. Keep moving in this way. Try to keep your right hip grounded on the mat. Just making a big circle. directions. So now your heel comes down first and then turn the toes out to the side. Bring your foot out and up. Now your leg drops. Turn the toes out.
and switching directions. Lower your heel down first, turn your toes up to the side. Check in with how you're feeling in your body. Notice if there's anything that you feel like you have left to do before moving into your final rest. You want to practice knee poses while your body's warm. You can go ahead and do so. If you want to take a few simple poses on your back to bring some compensation into your spine, go ahead. Or if you're ready to move into your final rest, Lower down onto your back. Make yourself as comfortable as you possibly can. Let your feet flop open. Create a little space between your heels. If you have low back issues and you want to slide a bolster or a pillow underneath your knees, that might feel good. Just release your hips down. start to notice as you move into your final resting pose. The way that the work that we've done with our bodies and with our breath and with our attention has helped to create some space done is temporarily cleared away some of the habit energy that covers over the deeper experience of ourselves, our brambles, our weeds. And so we have an opportunity now to allow ourselves just to rest into that less superficial aspect of our experience. And there's nothing you need to do to make this happen. No special technique or trick you need to perform. Just allow yourself to sink back into that simple feeling.
you with your fingers and your toes. If you can maintain that inward flowing attention, allowing your attention to stay with the deepest experience that's available to you. And slowly begin to increase the range of movement until you feel ready to bend your knees and roll to one side, press yourself up to a seated position using the strength of your arms. Feel free to grab any props sit on. And once you find your way into your comfortable seat, close your eyes and release any tension in your low belly and release your tongue down from the roof of your mouth, lightly pressing the tip of your tongue against the junction of the back of your top teeth, top teeth beneath the Jiva Mudra and bring your attention to your breath as it enters and exits at the tip of your nose. And we're going to engage with a pranayama practice known as Prana Mudra. And so to perform Prana Mudra, you're going to need to open your eyes so you can see what I'm doing with my hands. I'm going to bring your hands together to make this inverted diamond shape. Your thumbs are on top. The rest of your fingertips are lightly pressing toward one another. And then to begin the practice, you're going to bring your hands down to tap the ground or maybe to tap your foot or your leg lightly three times. And each time you tap your hands, you're going to say silently to yourself the name of the root chakra. The root chakra is Mula Dharma. Mula Dara. It means root support. So you're going to tap the ground saying to yourself silently, Mula Dara, Mula Dara, Mula Dara. And then on your inhalation, and draw your hands upward. And around the level of your heart, you feel your thumbs separate. And around the level of your third eye, you feel your fingertips separate. At the top of your inhalation, extend your arms. And then on your exhalation, draw your fingers back toward one another, bending at the elbows. Fingertips touch. Thumbs touch. And at the bottom of your exhalation, tap the ground or your foot three times, saying to yourself the name of the root chakra each time, Mula Dara. Understand the movements you are having. Close your eyes. As we continue with the practice. Next inhalation. Continue with everything you're doing, but draw your attention up from the base of your spine, level with your hands as they move up, up along your spine, so that your attention travels up your spine and out the crown of your head. And then on your exhalation, as your hands come level with the crown of your head, bring your attention down from the crown of your head. Down 
them on your spine, all the way down to the tip of your tailbone, still repeating the name of the root chakra three times as you tap the ground at the bottom of your head switch. Next time you exhale, go ahead and release your hands anywhere down onto your lap. Continue repeating the name of the root chakra to yourself three times. And then on your inhalation, use only your attention, drawing your attention up the spine from the tip of your tailbone all the way up along your spine so that at the top of your inhalation, you find your attention in the crown chakra above your head and then on your exhalation draw your attention back down from the crown chakra just above the crown of your head down through your spine all the way down to the tip of your tailbone and at the bottom of your exhalation repeat the name of the root chakra Muladhara to yourself three times and just continue breathing Once you complete the round that you're currently on and release the technique, and bring your palms together in prayer position, Anjali Mudra at the level of your heart, allowing your eyes to remain softly closed. Take a moment to bring forth your Sankalpa or your intention again, focusing on the longer term intention or your hoping practice will take you in the long run and see if you can formulate your intention in a simple sentence in the present tense I am free I am peace I am happy whole and healthy whatever it is repeat it to yourself silently Again and again, trusting that even if it does not feel true at the moment, it's in the process of becoming true.
close to the by chanting Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Inhale. Samasta Sukhin Yobhavantu. May all beings everywhere know freedom from suffering. And Namaste. Thank you for sharing your practice. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. And um, I hope to see you again soon.